This is home to the man considered by the United States to be a Mr Big of internet piracy. Oh, I was a computer junkie, basically. Um, it was all about the internet. Earlier today, the Customs Service executed Operation Buccaneer, an unprecedented investigation into a global network of cyberspace gangs responsible for pirating billions of dollars worth of software over the internet. In December 2001, as part of Operation Buccaneer, U.S. federal agents conducted simultaneous raids on 62 people in 20 countries, including the United States, Finland, England, Norway and Australia. In their sites, the members of a group called Drink or Die, an internet software piracy group. Just a little bit of background on Drink or Die, it was formed in 1993 in the USSR, in Russia. Um, it was headed by an individual called Deviator. Since that time, it has expanded principally to um, compete with ga other gangs in Europe and America. Um, since that time, it has expanded to worldwide representation um, with two leaders, one in the United States and the other uh, actually in Australia. The leader in Australia was known as Bandido. His real name, Hugh Griffiths. I'm very good at um, keeping people under control. Um, in a, you know, in an online environment. So you were leading an underground internet piracy community mm -hmm. from this home on the central coast of New South yeah. Wales. From a modem link in his father's home, Griffiths ran what was called a wares group from inside a private internet chat room. The aim of all wares groups is to obtain and uh, break the protections of um, software, uh, games and applications such as Adobe Photoshop, that, that type of thing, and uh, release it on their private sites um, before the other group. It's a, it's a, game, it's a, a, a game of brinkmanship. Simple as that. You know, groups are interested in bragging rights. Nothing more, nothing less. What did you crack? Me, personally, nothing. But Griffith's colleagues were hard at work. One was a guy called John Sankus, who was a, um, uh, one of the uh, head uh, uh, software engineers in uh, uh, Gateway, the computer company. Um, there was another guy who worked for Symantec. Uh, another guy was head of the uh, um, head of uh, software, uh, sorry, head of um, security at uh, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Uh, another guy was uh, chief financial officer of uh, Steampipe.com. Uh, another guy worked uh, for the Bank of America, that type of thing. And you were the leader? Yeah. They obtained early access to commercially important software, such as computer office products and so on. They stripped the protections from those products and they then distributed them through websites back to the marketplace, back to the public. And so they did much more than simply download a pop song or uh, a latest release video. After almost two years of investigations by agents from the US Customs Cyber Smuggling Centre, Hugh Griffiths was arrested in August 2003. Despite never having been to the United States, Griffiths was charged with having committed copyright crime there. They were also wanting to send a strong message around the world to would-be infringers that they were not safe hiding behind national boundaries, but could in fact be extradited to the United States and face justice there. At the time, Australia's negotiations for a free trade agreement with the United States were in full swing, and President George W. Bush had made his first official visit here, stressing the need for cooperation when it comes to intellectual property. But the commitment we talked about is to make sure our negotiators push forward with a deal. Obviously, agriculture is an important issue. Um, intellectual property is an important issue. There's a lot of important issues that we've got to work through, but if, uh, uh, and I think we can. In Australia, Griffith's offence was not considered to be of a criminal nature, yet because there's no presumption of bail in extradition cases, Griffith's languished in two Sydney jails 
for three years as he fought the US government's efforts to extradite him. Well, Silverwater and Park Lee, the remand facilities in New South Wales, are absolutely horrendous. Um, the degree of violence is astounding. The general public would be horrified if they knew the extent to which people are put at risk. Now, in Hugh's case, he's a man with no prior conviction who um, had clinical depression at the time of the offences, who would have pleaded guilty. In jail and having exhausted all avenues of appeal through Australian courts, Griffiths asked the Federal Customs Minister to refuse the US request to extradite him. But the then Minister, Chris Ellison, refused his request to stay in Australia and effectively handed Griffiths over to US authorities. It was a move which led one of the most senior judges in New South Wales, Justice Peter Young, to express considerable concern. International copyright violations are a great problem. However, there is also a consideration that a country must protect its nationals from being removed from their homeland to a foreign country merely because the commercial interests of that country are claimed to have been affected by the person's behaviour in Australia and the foreign country can exercise influence over Australia. I believe absolutely America's been heavy-handed in it. Australia didn't have to consent to the extradition and Australia did and other countries didn't. Could it have been handled a different way? And the answer is clearly it could have been handled a different way. Um, he could have been charged here, he could have been tried here. Justice then would have been served. Hugh Griffith's extradition to the United States meant that he faced a much harsher penalty for his crime than if he'd been prosecuted here in Australia. The maximum sentence for copyright fraud in the United States is 10 years. In Australia, it's five years. Last year, Griffiths was sentenced in Virginia to a total of four years and three months jail. And that was the highest sentence for anyone arrested as part of Operation Buccaneer. Yet if sentencing statistics here are any guide, as a first-time offender who was prepared to plead guilty, Hugh Griffiths would most likely have not been in prison for his crime here at all. Perhaps... Um they let me be extradited um, to demonstrate that the free trade agreement was working, for example. You know, I really don't know, but um, it just strikes me as very odd that any sane government at the end of the day would, would allow such a, a, an extradition to happen. He was left to hang. I mean, I don't, I don't know what would have happened if he hadn't had somebody on his side here. I really don't, because how do you organise for yourself with no money except the money that's being sent from your dad's pension. A month ago, the 45-year-old was released from jail in the United States. By the time he finally got home, he'd spent almost four and a half years behind bars. We have this thought that justice has to be proportionate and it just wasn't proportionate to what Hugh had done in the situation in which Hugh had done it. Hugh Griffiths is back living with his father on the central coast, is yet to find a job and doesn't have a computer. Philippa MacDonald, Lateline.